Now we're going to look next at the Ram, which is a Canadian tank. And I should say to begin with, the Ram we're talking about is the animal, a kind of big airy male sheep, sort of symbol of um, General Worthington, who was head of the Canadian armour section. And that's why the name was chosen for this tank. It's quite an interesting tank because while the Americans were building the M3 medium, which we know as the Lee or Grant, the Canadians went for a turreted tank instead. So it's actually a little bit ahead of the Sherman. It runs on basic M3 suspension, although this one, which is a late model, has the later model suspension with the return roller further back. But it's basically the M3 suspension, an M3 engine, means it's got the nine-cylinder Continental in the back, driving forward into an M3 transmission. So we don't really need to go through that part again. But the basic tank is very interesting. For a start, the Canadians were running out of welded plate. They've mainly gone in for castings. So for exactly the same reasons the Australians did with the AC1 Sentinel, they chose a casting, an armoured casting, for the upper hull of their next cruiser tank. And there, oh, and we actually imported from Great Britain a chap called L.E. Carr, who was a member of the mechanisation board, who was sent over to Canada. He was a bit of an expert on casting. He'd done or arranged the castings of the Matilda turret, among other things. And um, Ted Carr was sent over to Canada and given the job of designing the turret, the hull, for the, um, the ram. It's an interesting vehicle. So you've got a totally cast hull. The first thing to know, it's only got a 60-inch diameter turret ring. It's 69 inches on the Sherman, although that doesn't sound very much. It made the difference between the kind of guns it could carry and how it would serve. And it's the, one of the reasons it was never used in action as a gun tank. Now, being done to the British way of doing things rather than the American, it has the, the driver on the right hand side, which you'd expect in a British tank, and a sub turret on the left. This one's been blanked off, I'll tell you about that in a minute. But normally it had a sub turret with about 120 degree of movement in it which was used as um, instead of a hull machine gun. So that was a feature of the RAM, although the latest models of the RAM had the machine gun mounted in the hull exactly the same way as on a Sherman, except totally on the opposite side. But that's the reason, and that's why this tank is built as it is. It's got this totally cast hull, the smaller diameter turret ring, and then the cover over the engine, exactly the same as on a Sherman. But it was just that little bit in front of the Sherman as far as being built is concerned. The turret was arranged to mount the six pounder gun, which is why it had that bolt on front and was designed to take the six pounder. To begin with, the six pounder wasn't available. All they could do was the two pounder. So you do see what they call the Ram One with a two-pounder gun mounted in the turret, which is almost pointless, really. But when the six-pounder came out, that was put in, and it became the Ram 2, with a bit more push and a bit more firepower in it. This particular one's actually got an American 75 in. Now, there's no reason why a six-pounder can't be converted into a 75, except that the smaller turret ring means there's less room inside to serve it. But in this case, it doesn't matter because the tank was actually used by the Dutch army and it was used as a target tank. In other words, it went driving up the ranges while infantry fired rifles and machine guns at it. Just for a bit of fun, I suppose. But um, that's why all the orifices on it, including the end of the barrel where the cap is, all the orifices in the machine gun turret in the front of the turret and the driver's hatch, they're all welded shut or covered over with welded plates. And that's done to keep bullets out. So it, in those respects, it's not really like any other operational tank. But it's, it's, quite, it's the only example of a ram we've got and probably the only example we ever will have. So it, we, we ignore those things if we can and just show it as a gun tank, which it, it more or less was. They 
Canadians never used them as gun tanks. They were issued with Shermans during the Second World War. But they did have a few with turrets, which were used as um, OP tanks or um, command tanks, that kind of thing. They tended to use them in that role only until the Ram Kangaroo came along. We've already done the Ram Kangaroo in a tank chat before. And the Ram Kangaroo is the same basic vehicle with the turret removed and the turret sort of opening used for transporting troops. And it was one of the most successful infantry carriers of the Second World War. But this is the gun tank from which the Ram Kangaroo was developed. And those are really the main features of it. It's driven, as I say, by the nine-cylinder air-cooled um, Continental engine, um, which is typical of the Shermans, of course, of the early ones, and has a cast hull, that hull designed by L.E. Carr, an English um, member of the mechanisation board who really was successful. And that's the basic sort of layout of this vehicle. It makes it quite an interesting tank from many points of view, although it was never used in action and probably doesn't have that cachet the, that a fighting tank has. It's still an interesting tank to study. OK, now if you enjoyed that um, bit of film or any of the bits of film we've made, if you'd subscribe to YouTube, that helps us a great deal. And more so if you'll support Patreon, because that's something that we really can do with. Thanks very much.